cabinet and members of the Senate and members of the House and the Space Agency, from the streets of San Francisco where people stopped me a few days ago and you all love that city, I know as I do. But most important, I had a telephone call yesterday. The toll wasn't incidentally as great as the one I made to you fellows on the moon. <laughs> I made that collect, incidentally, in case you didn't know. <laughs> but I called uh, three, uh, in my view, three of the greatest ladies and most courageous ladies in the whole world today, your wives. And from Jan and Joan and Pat, I bring their love and their congratulations. We think it's just wonderful that they could have participated at least through television in this return. We're only sorry they couldn't be here. And also, I've got to let you in a little secret. I made a date with them. <laughs> uh, I invited them to dinner on, on the 13th of uh, August, right after you come out of quarantine. It will be a state dinner held in Los Angeles. The governors of all the 50 states will be there, the ambassadors, others from around the world and in America. And uh, they told me that you would come too. And all I want to know, will you come? We want to honor you then. <laughs> we'll do anything you say, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. Uh, one question I think that uh, all of us would like to ask, uh, uh, as we saw you bouncing around in that uh, boat out there, I wonder if that wasn't the hardest part of the journey. Was that the only, did, did any of you get seasick? No, we didn't, and it, it was uh, one of the harder parts, but it was one of the most pleasant, we can assure you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I just know that uh, uh, you can sense what we all sense. When you get back now, it's a, have you been able to follow some of the things that happened when you've gone? Did you know about the All-Star game? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, uh, the capsule communicators have been giving us uh, they daily news posted. reports. Yeah. Were you American League or National League? I'm a National League man. National I'm nonpartisan, League. sir. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> There's the politician in the group. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're sorry you missed that game. Yes. Well. Oh, you knew that, too? You really? Yeah, we heard that... Uh, yeah, the rain. The rain. Right. Well, we haven't learned to control the weather yet, but that's something we can look forward to as tomorrow's challenge. Right, right. Well, I can only summarize it because I don't want to hold you now. You have so much more to do. And Gee, you look great. You feel as good as oh, you look. Oh, you great. feel just perfect, Mr. Yeah. President. Yeah. Are you... I understand your Frank Borman says you're a little younger by reason of having going into space. Is that right? Do you feel that way, a little younger? We're a lot younger than Frank Borman. <laughs> <laughs> There he is over there. <laughs> Come on over, Frank, so they can see you. And are you going to take that lying down? <laughs> it looks like he has aged in the last yeah. couple of weeks. Come on, Frank. Mr. President, the one thing I want to, you know, we have a, a poet in Mike Collins, and he really gave me a hard time for describing you words of fantastic and beautiful. And you were, I counted them, in three minutes up there, you used four fantastics and two beautifuls. <laughs> <laughs> well, just let me close off with this one thing. I, I was thinking, as, as, as you know, as you came down, and we knew it was a success, and it had only been eight days, just, just a week, a long week, that this is the greatest week in the history of the world since the creation. Because as a result of what happened in this week, the world is bigger, infinitely. And also, as I'm going to find on this trip around the world, and as Secretary Rogers will find as he covers the other countries in Asia, as a result of what you've done, the world's never been closer together before. And we just thank you for that. And I only hope that all of us in government, all of us in America, uh, that as a result of what you've done, we can do our job a little better. We can reach for the stars just as you have reached so far from the stars. We don't want to hold you any longer. Anybody have a, a last word? How about promotions? Do you think we could arrange something? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just pleased to be back and very honored that you uh, were so kind as to come out here and uh, welcome us back. Uh, and uh, we look, look forward to getting out of this quarantine and, and uh, great. talking without having glass great. between us. Uh, Yes, and uh, incidentally, the, the speeches that you have to make at this dinner can be very short. And if you want to say fantastic or beautiful, that's all right with <laughs> us. <laughs> Don't try to think of new, any new adjectives. They've all been said. And now I think, incidentally, that uh, all of us uh, who, the millions that are seeing us on television now, seeing you, uh, w 
would feel as I do that, in a sense, our prayers have been answered. And I think it would be very appropriate if Chaplain Pierto, the chaplain of this ship, were to offer a prayer of thanksgiving. And if he would step up now, Chaplain, thank you. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, our minds are staggered and our spirits exultant with the magnitude and precision of this entire Apollo 11 mission. We have spent the past week in communal anxiety and hope as our astronauts sped through the glories and dangers of the heavens. As we try to understand and analyze the scope of this achievement for human life, our reason is overwhelmed with abounding gratitude and joy, even as we realize the increasing challenges of the future. This magnificent event illustrates anew what man can accomplish when purpose is firm and intent corporate. A man on the moon was promised in this decade, and though some were unconvinced, the reality is with us this morning in the persons of astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins. We applaud their splendid exploits and we pour out our thanksgiving for their safe return to us, to their families, to all mankind. From our inmost beings, we sing humble yet exuberant praise. May the great effort and commitment seen in this Project Apollo inspire our lives to move similarly in other areas of need. May we, the people, by our enthusiasm and devotion and insight, move to new landings in brotherhood, human concern, and mutual respect. May our country, afire with inventive leadership and backed by a committed followership, blaze new trails into all areas of human cares. See our enthusiasm and bless our joy with dedicated purpose toward the many needs at hand. Link us in friendship with peoples throughout the world as we strive together to better the human condition. Grant us peace beginning in our own hearts and a mind attuned with goodwill towards our neighbor. All this we pray as our thanksgiving rings out to thee in the name of our Lord. Amen. Amen. So America has been to the moon and back safely and successfully. And we think perhaps in the process rediscovered itself and discovered that it can do anything it sets out to do. On the moon, to the planets, or in its own cities, in our own cities. Apollo 12 lies ahead in November with a new landing site on the moon, Site 7. A new goal and new dangers as well as new rewards. And Apollo 13, 14, and 15 next year as well as those cities, slums, and a people who can and will do all that has to be done when they know. The moon then can be seen for what it really is, for what it truly is. And we don't need to look through telescopes, only with our naked eye, to discover that the moon is nothing more than a mirror image of the Earth and what we can do ourselves when we set out to. This is Jules Bergman at ABC Space Headquarters. Tom. Jules, of course, it was Presidents Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, all moved us along uh, supporting the space program, putting the power of the office behind the space program, uh, continuing to keep it alive and vital with the necessary funds and the necessary full commitment. Uh, President Nixon there today uh, was uh, there as the chief executive, of course, but many other presidents, those I just mentioned, of course, have had a great deal uh, to, to uh, contribute uh, toward this final goal of putting a man on the moon. But of course, the firm commitment was that of John Kennedy back in 1961 in an address to Congress when he said, we've got to be there by 1970, and we have. 